हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट नॉन इन्वेसिव न्यूरो मॉनिटरिंग यूजुअली इन न्यूरो आई वी डू इन्वेसिव मॉनिटरिंग टुडे वी विल टेल यू फाइव मस्ट नो मॉनिटर्स व्हिच विल हेल्प यू मैनेज न्यूरो क्रिटिकल पेशेंट्स विदाउट गोइंग फॉर इन्वेजिव मॉनिटरिंग द न्यूरोलॉजिकल असेसमेंट इन एक्यूट ब्रेन इंजरी इज अ क्रिटिकल पार्ट ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट a comprehensive evaluation is important and is infeasible in the acute phase especially with sedated patients so for this many a times we go for invasive neuro monitoring now these are considered to be gold standards however they have a associated cost uh, infection risk and it is it requires a higher level of skill where you need a neurosurgeon or somebody to actually do the procedure and put the monitors in place so non invasive techniques are equally important they are more easily available and they can be done by anyone so you do not need such high specialization to get these things done so there have been a lot of recent advances in the non invasive techniques so these techniques can identify track subtle changes in the intracranial pathology so the first things that we will look for is the monitoring of the brain hemodynamics so there will be five things that we are going to monitor the first thing being the brain's hemodynamics for that we can use brain ultrasound increasingly being used in neurocritical care as a repeatable and safe bedside tool it helps in, in assessing the cerebral hemodynamics the most commonly used technique here is the transcranial doppler it combines doppler pulse wave technology with b mode imaging it provides the direct visualization of the brain's anatomy and the pathological event it detects intracerebral hemorrhages masses hydrocephalus and midline shifts it can trigger indications for repeated imaging or detect emerging brain catastrophes like a new bleed it identifies major intracranial vessels and their blood flow velocities now the waveform analysis provides information on the cerebral blood flow assesses the cerebrovascular autoregulation status estimates the cerebral perfusion pressure estimates of non invasive intracranial pressure is based on the pulsatility index that is more than 1.3 diastolic flow velocity less than 20 indicators for flow velocities slow velocities indicate intravascular blood volume reduction and hyperdynamic indicate systemic disease like hyperemia sepsis and central causes like vasospasm and stenosis now the application of this in the critical care unit helps us in diagnosing conditions like brain death embolic phenomenons right to left vascular shunts so the next thing that we monitor is the brain's electrical activity for that you need the eeg monitoring it is recommended for comatose patients it can be done intermittently or continuously it is essential for detecting seizures and initiating or escalating anti epileptic treatments seizure detection is done in comatose patient often in uh, which indicates structural brain damage or dysfunction eeg is critical for identifying epileptiform discharges and non convulsive status epilepticus the quantitative eeg it involves recording digital eeg signals and analyzing them using a complex mathematical algorithms it processes signal into specific frequency bands for rapid bedside screening it is useful for detecting non convulsive seizures ischemia bleeding hydrocephalus brain swelling herniation and to assess even the depth of sedation it helps in recognizing malignant patterns associated with poor outcomes the application of qeeg it provides continuous monitoring rapid assessment facilitates timely intervention in neurocritical care settings and enhances the detection and management of various brain pathologies and conditions the next is the brain function how do we monitor the brain's function you can do that by automated papillometers 
is a portable device which measures the pupil size at baseline changes after a three second flash of visible light it optimizes accuracy of pupillary examination a fundamental aspect of neurological exam it provides objective quantitative and a reliably repeatable assessment of the brain stem function the assessment of the parameters is that it measures the pupillary size the latency the constriction and the dilation velocities it is validated for monitoring brain function through graded assessment of central reflex pathways it is indicative of global brain pathologic pathophysiological issues like increased icp and anoxic damage now neurological pupillary index it is an automated algorithm that incorporates multiple pupillometry parameters it is proven to be a good prognostic tool in post cardiac arrest encephalopathy and neurocritical care it correlates with high icp when the, the neurologic pupillary index is abnormal that is from 0 to 3 the next thing that we can know is the brain's mechanical properties this is done by intracranial compliance measurement it's the adequate balance of intracranial volumes is crucial to get a proper cerebral blood perfusion skull microdynamic sensor that is b4c it is an emerging technology which measures nanometric pulsatile cranial elastic movements within each heartbeat it is an acquired signal which is exported to a cloud analytic system for processing it provides real-time assessment of icp by surrogate waveforms the key metrics that is p2 by p1 ratio and time to peak is used to assess the intracranial compliance deterioration the validation and its application it is validated against invasive techniques in neurocritical care patients it's a potential useful thing in situations like icc is compromised by systemic factors like ards the nim synergism and the diagnostic power the potential for enhanced diagnostic monitoring by combining different nim techniques that is bus and b4c uh, the bus estimates the optic nerve sheet diameter which increases with ele elevated cerebrospinal fluid pressures and a value of more than 5.8 millimeter in the optic nerve sheet diameter is associated with increased icp the combined use of these tools helps us in deciding escalating or de-escalating the icp treatment that you are giving finally is the brain oxygenation in the brain oxygenation what we use is a near infrared spectroscopy which measures the tissue hemoglobin oxygen saturation it is composed of two sensors positioned over the frontal lobes with light sources it provides the saturation as a global indicator of cerebral oxygenation it reflects the balance between the oxygen consumption and the delivery derived from combined arterial capillary and the venous blood the applications is that it is widely used to identify episodes of cerebral desaturation in various settings like non-abi patients also the saturation less than 50 or a drop of more than 10 to 20 from baseline is associated with some kind of a neurological complication the technique and the methodology is the risk of contamination by extracranial signals the current recommendations suggest using invasive methods for accurate cerebral brain oxygen measurement the limited use of nirs in acute brain injury patient is due to these issues so to summarize these are the five main monitors that we have the first one being the brain ultrasound which helps us in getting us the perfusion of the brain next is the eg or bis which helps us in measuring the seizures and the sedation depth next we have the papillometry which helps us in measuring the pupillary size its reaction and we can also get an index which can help us in finding whether the brain is functioning normally or not the next is the intracranial compliance which shows the cerebral autoregulation and with the use of cloud technology it will give us a value which will help us in knowing the brain's icp finally we have the nirs which is the cerebral oxygenation which can help us guiding therapy to improve the oxygenation of the brain and prevent the secondary damage to the brain because of hypoxemia thank you for your patience